Welcome to another Artful Geek Girl art journal step-by-step. -step. This page is called Moon Goddess. I started out by drawing a face that would fit inside one of my uh, nesting circle um, wafer thin dies so that I could make a full moon. This is for my journal 52 journal. So once I had created it and it fit inside the circle, the circle size that I wanted, um, I went over the pencil drawing with my pit pen, which is India ink. So when that dries, that's going to be permanent and I'm not going to have to worry about it going anywhere if I put um, something wet on top, for example, watercolor or um, anything else, paint, acrylic paint or whatever, because it's going to stay put. Journal 52 is a challenge to do an art journal page once a week and I joined that for 2016 in order to go forward with my art journaling and to keep me on line. You can see what a difference just using that pen to outline is. Now you'll see me with my phone and I'm doing this because I have some pencil markings on there of where I want shadings and highlights and I know that I'm going to paint over this with some watercolor and so in order to keep track of where I wanted the, the shading and the highlights on that I took a picture with my, with my phone. Now I'm simply going to um, take some gray and kind of put in a few little gray spots to kind of make it look like the moon. If you've ever seen a photo of the moon you know that it has some gray patches on it and they're a little bit darker and so I want my moon goddess, um, Celine, to have some of those same uh, moon patches um, on her face. So that's what I did with these watercolors. This is just a simple watercolor set that I got at Michael's. It's an artist loft, has all of these colors, and I believe I got it for $4.99. Now I'm going to use the white watercolor just to go in around those gray patches and uh, color in some white there. I wouldn't have had to do this, um, but my watercolor paper that I used is a little off-white and I, and I kind of wanted to make the white part a little bit brighter because I know that I'm going to be adding some colors and doing some different things to it. So I really wanted to pull up some white as well to highlight the white areas. You can see me using a water brush there. Um, I really love the water brush because I don't have to have a cup of water with me. So if I really wanted to take this along with me in my travels, I could. Now, at this point, I would need a smaller watercolor set. This watercolor set is pretty large, but I do like the idea of the water brush. And it works really well with my Prismacolor watercolor pencils, which do travel well. Now that I've got the moon look on that circle, now I'm going to take um, my Copic markers and some of my pit pens and I'm going to do some coloring and some shading.
What you see there is a silver gel pen that I'm using to do um, Celine's eyebrows. And it is a glitter pen. And then with my Pit Big Brush White Marker, um, I am going to add those highlight points that I had marked out in pencil and taken a picture of with my phone. I can simply just look at the picture on my phone and know where I wanted those highlight points. So that's what you see me doing here with the white pen. And then I did some shading. And you see me using a gray Copic marker there. I think it's the warm gray Copic. And blending it with the Copic blender. And what I did here was I wanted it to be really light, so you can see me taking the Copic Blender and touching it to the tip of the warm gray Copic marker and then coloring it on. And that gives me a lighter um, color and it's more easily controlled. And then I simply um, color up a little bit and it cleans that blender right off and I'm doing the same thing with a little bit of light blue that I decided I wanted to add to her cheeks I apologize for being out of the frame. <clears throat> I have a very small work area that my camera is located over and I uh, was out of the frame. However, all I'm doing is taking my gray pit brush pen, um, big brush pen, and going around the edges of that moon. Now you see my Journal 52 journal that I made out of file folders. So I made this journal myself. And I usually do just one single page and it's just a small journal. And the reason that I did that was I felt that it would be more doable for me. It would be a quicker process every week to create a page and it wouldn't seem so overwhelming. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking some Distress Paint by Tim Holtz. Uh, and first I'm using the Faded Jeans color to give um, a background. <laughs> you just saw my granddaughter's little hand in there uh, playing with some new stamps that I had received. And as I started to put the color on, I decided I needed to protect uh, the pages underneath and the completed page that I had on the other side. So with that faded jeans, I'm going in and just giving it a base color. And then what you're going to see me do is layer. And I want this to look like a night sky, but I want some of that blue to show through. And that's the thing that I love about these Distress Paints, is that they do do that. They're, they're opaque to a certain extent, but there is... A, sort of a transparency to them especially when you apply them with a baby wipe which is what I'm doing um, that allows that hint of color to come through so now I'm taking the chip sapphire which is a darker blue and I'm going to apply this as well all over the page and when I finish that and it dries then I am going to or it's semi dry 
I don't wait for it to completely dry. I'm also going to apply the black soot over the top of that and then I will have my night sky. Now I'm going to take some more Distress, uh, this is the white picket fence, and a little bit of water. And as you notice that I kind of mix it on my nonstick mat that I use, it's by Ranger. And I spray a little bit of water, I put a little bit of that white picket fence down, and then using a very small brush, I'm going to load that up with some watered down white and just tap it over my page. And it's going to create stars or a splatter effect, which in this case on my night sky is going to be stars. Now I'm going to take a Bow Bunny background stamp. I'm going to take the stone wall and I am going to use a uh, Versamagic white chalk ink to apply to that stamp and I am going to create a, a stone wall down at the bottom of the page. You can see that I went in and I fixed it a little bit. Now I'm taking some gray watercolor and I'm just going in and putting a little gray on the stones, giving it some shadow. You notice when I stamped this, um, I didn't get a clean stamp image and it's because this is a file folder album and there are quite a few pages that, blank pages underneath this page because of course we just started out the year. <clears throat> but what I did was I re-inked the stamp and then I placed it right over. Here I have cut out a black border out of black cardstock and I am going to hand write uh, and keep it all connected. Now I'm going to take <clears throat> the cat stamp from this Santoro set that I ordered off from Blitzy and I am going to stamp my cat with black, jet black archival ink onto a tag that actually had been stamped 
previously with a texture and um, and it and embossed, heat embossed with embossing powder to make it kind of look like a tiger cat. And then I am going to fussy cut it out in order to add it to my page. Using my quarter inch score tape, I applied it to the frame that I had written on. And now I'm just going to place it down on my journal page. And I'm going to add my cat as if it's sitting on the stone wall. And I'm using some Scotch 3M foam adhesive tape. I'm cutting it out to fit the back of the moon. And then I'm simply going to apply it to the page. And then I'm going to make a double layer for the cat so that the cat pops out just a little bit further than the moon does. So I'm going to cut that to fit the back of that cat and then I'm going to double it up so that it so that when you when someone looks at my page the cat actually appears closer to them than the moon does. And my cat is simply sitting on the stone wall. Now I'm going to take Wink of Stella and it's white Wink of Stella and I'm going to add a little bit of that wonderful glitter to the face of my moon and then I'm also going to create moon rays coming down because in my mini poem it talks about uh, the moon's rays touching the form so it would be the form of the cat and so we're going to just put that in so that it looks like moonbeams coming down and enveloping that pretty little kitty sitting on that stone wall. And as I'm working on this, you can see the Wink is Stella drying so that you can see that it is, it does have a white, uh, it is white when it dries with a gold and iridescent sparkle to it. And as you can see, I sort of touch different places on the cat as well so that it looked like the moon beams were shining down on the cat and then a little bit closer to the other edges we, we want the moon beams to look like they're concentrated like they're reaching out and so um, I kept it close the, the moon castella closer to the rest now I'm going to use some glossy accents and I'm going to cover the entire moon so that it ends up looking like it's enameled so I'm going to cover the entire moon with that and then I'm also going to just do some scribbling with the glossy accents afterwards in the area that would be the moonbeams and then apply an iridescent glitter. And as always, um, I list out the products that I use in these art journal pages on my blog. So if you go to theartfulgeekgirl.com um, and look for the art journal step-by-step -step of Celine or the Moon Goddess, then you will find um, the products listed there. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe.